This thing just has so much torque on such a small bike, it's actually insane. This is my DIY Razer MX650 72 volt mini electric supermoto. In very early testing, I let one of my friends try the bike and he ended up looping it and sending it flying down the street. So we have some damages to fix before we can ride it. But that does give you some perspective on just how powerful this little bike is. While I do the repairs, I'm gonna talk about all the parts I used to build this bike. And then afterwards, we'll take it on a ride for some first impressions. First, we'll need to remove the rear wheel, which is sitting on a YBE four to five inch extended rear swing arm. Both the front and rear wheels on this bike are from a Razor RSF 650. While I have the rear wheel removed, I'm going to go ahead and change the wheel bearings because I was getting a slight ticking sound from the back wheel and I'm hoping this will fix that. Now that I've swapped the wheel bearings and reinstalled the wheel, I can put the chain on. I'm using generic number 35 roller chain on a YBE 64-2 sprocket that came paired with my YBE extended rear swing arm. I was actually pretty surprised that the chain broke from just being looped out like this, but it did take a pretty weird fall. Luckily the bike's pretty much repairable and he was totally okay. After reinstalling the chain and adjusting the tensioner, everything's all set in the rear. Now we'll move to the front of the bike and fix the throttle. In order to fix the throttle, I first need to remove the battery. This is a custom 72 volt, 20 amp hour, 200 amp discharge lithium ion battery that I built from 21700 cells. This monster allows this bike to crank out a maximum of 14 kilowatts of peak power. In front of the battery is a Flipsky VESC 75 through 50 motor controller. Pulling the battery out reveals the wiring on the VESC where we will attach our new throttle. As you can see, the old throttle is scarred up and it is stuck open, so I'm going to swap it with a brand new generic Suron throttle. If you're looking for an e-bike throttle, I highly recommend using these generic Suron ones. They're pretty high quality and they're not too expensive. After removing the old one, I'm going to slide the new one on and then we'll solder the wires together. This is a case where some people may want to use connectors, but I have no intention of ever removing the throttle, so I find soldering works just fine. Going over the remaining parts of the bike, we have a DNM rear air shock, we have some generic Piranha pit bike front forks, and we have some triple trees that I also got off of Amazon. With our new throttle connected and all of the repairs done, we're ready to take it for a rip. All right guys, all the repairs are made so we can finally ride this thing. Now before we do anything, we gotta do a burnout. This thing just has so much torque on such a small bike, it's actually insane. Yeah, first thing you notice is this thing is tiny. It's a tiny bike, like through and through, it's just small. Now, I think that honestly makes it more fun, but it does also make it a little bit goofy. It looks silly. It feels kind of silly, but it's really controllable. So for that reason, I would say, you know, it's one of those things that, that is definitely worth building to have like as a little toy to kind of rip around if you're interested in it. But I mean, you can see it's, it's no joke. Like you've got a ton of power. And just to put everything in perspective, this is about 14 kilowatts on a bike this size and a stock Suron. I think you're looking at about seven or eight kilowatts, I think on the new ones. So double the power of a stock Suron on a bike that's like half the size. It's kind of goofy, like I said, but it's so much fun that, you know, I mean, you can't take yourself seriously on one of these. I've seen people say it before. If you're riding a mini bike around, you can't take yourself serious, but you can have a lot of fun. So I think for something like that, and for just like a little suburb ripper, which is how I use this thing, it's really like the perfect toy for this. But yeah, 14 kilowatts on this bike. So we have a 72 volt battery, which is 84 volts fully charged and we're pulling about 200 amps. So that works out to roughly 14 kilowatts of peak power, which again, putting that in perspective is like a double a Suron, which is crazy on a bike this size. And I mean, you could feel it too. The torque is insane. You can pop the front wheel up anytime you want to. It's super easy. So just another plus for this bike. And because it's so small, you know, it's so maneuverable. It's so controllable. And you know, if you end up falling off of it, you're not that high in the air. You know, I've looped this thing out trying to learn wheelies a couple times and it's not that bad because I can just stand right up on my feet instead of, you know, falling off of a, a taller bike. So for that reason, really is a lot of fun. And I think for the sort of space that this fits in, sort of like in the pit bike range, it, it, it's so much fun because you can't have a gas pit bike that's gonna be anywhere near this powerful 
and you certainly can't ride it around in the middle of the suburbs like you're just not going to be able to get away with that it's it's not happening but this thing's basically silent so you know it, it's a lot easier to ride something like this around and not get yourself into trouble meanwhile if you had a gas bike you're going to be pissing people off so another plus to having something like this if you're out in the suburbs and you want to just rip around on the street and another thing too you know as a stunt bike or a bike you want to learn wheelies and tricks on another perfect application for this thing it's you know the wheelbase is pretty short even with the extended swing arm you still have you know plenty of torque and the balance point is plenty close enough that you know you can pop it right up and wheelie i'm still not the best at it yet but as far as something to learn on this is a lot better than like compared it to maybe my my stealth bomber bike you know way bigger wheels a taller bike a lot more intimidating to learn on i'm sure a suron would feel more or less the same way you know it's it's just more intimidating and this thing's tiny you know you've got 10 inch wheels on this i have the rsf 650 street wheels on this or you could also go for you know a 12 inch dirt wheel but or even a 14 okay interesting choice there buddy um but yeah i mean you, you i don't know it's so much fun for the for the form factor that it's in and you know also it's kind of funny especially for me i actually had one of these mx 650 razor bikes when i was i don't know maybe 11 years old or so and I had a blast on it as a kid, so it's kind of a funny full circle moment to have a version of it that's been built out to be fun for an adult too. I don't know, you know, if we're looking at 20 times more power than the 650 watt MX650 Razor bike, they definitely never intended for something like this to rip around like this, but you know, a whole community of people found these things and thought it was fun, so you end up with a bunch of people building really crazy bikes. That's also one of the funny things. As powerful and ridiculous as this bike is, it's actually relatively tame compared to some of the setups I've seen. You know, if you're looking into this stuff, you've probably been on the Facebook groups, but there are people building absolute monsters. I'm talking 30 kilowatts, crazy stuff, dragsters, you know, going almost 100 miles an hour on a bike this small. So it's kind of cool to have, you know, a community of people that are, are modding a kid's bike to be that ridiculous. I would say though that this power level I think is a good happy medium. If you're really new to riding e-bikes or your motorcycles, anything in general, it's probably a little bit much. You can turn it down, um, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second. You can turn it down very easily, but this is a good middle ground. It's not gonna go flying away from you at any given opportunity, but you still have you know plenty of power to do wheelies, rip around. The acceleration is honestly pretty thrilling. It's a fun bike. So I would say, I think with the current setup, it goes about 50 miles an hour-ish. It might be a little bit more than that. I th I'm thinking about 50, which, you know, for me is plenty. Like I mentioned earlier, there's absolute speed demons uh, throughout, you know, the Facebook groups and everything that have built near 100 mile an hour bikes, which is not something that I'm trying to do on a frame this small. But you know, 50 miles an hour, still faster than a stock Sur on top speed wise. and. It's mostly gonna be because of those tiny wheels, you know, you have to spin them super fast to go fast. But talking a little bit more about the controller, this is running a VESC 75350, which is a open source VESC controller made by Flipsky. So what's kind of cool about that is it's an open source protocol that multiple different companies can use to adapt to their own controllers for different, you know, different use cases, any kind of EV, BEV sort of application. And one of the cool things about it is because it's open source, you get a really broad range of of tuning options and things you can do and features, which is pretty cool. I'm not even taking advantage of a lot of stuff that this controller is capable of, but for the price, it's extremely powerful. You know, there is a little bit of an upfront cost because you're gonna have to learn a couple little tuning things. It's not quite as simple as something like a far driver where you can kind of just slide things on the app or enter numbers and it kind of works. You know, there's still some nuance to tuning those too, but you know, something like uh, Electro and Co, um, Noisy Cricket or something like that has been a little bit more wrapped up and they've, they've done a little bit more work to put it into a form factor that doesn't require quite as much tuning knowledge. But if you're willing to take the time to kind of sit down, read some forums, use chat GPT, watch some YouTube videos, you can figure out the tuning pretty easily. And then once you do, you get so much power for such a low price that it's pretty much unbeatable. And reliability wise, I have not had any problems. I've been riding this bike for 
quite a few weeks now running it pretty hard and I have not had this controller fail on me in any way. So as far as the controller goes, I definitely would recommend giving the VESC a try if you're willing to spend just, it's not even that bad, but it does take a little bit more research, a little bit more understanding to get it working the way that you're gonna want it to. I was immediately surprised by this controller. As soon as I got it dialed in, you know, this bike, it took me, it did take me a day. You know, I, I was playing around with stuff. I had to test a few things. Motor cogged a little bit, ran a little bit funky a couple times. But after that, after the initial little hiccups, this thing has run incredibly smooth. It's incredibly, the torque delivery is just very smooth, you know, very easy to control, very easy to just pop it up. I'm still learning my wheelies. I'm kind of stuck in the power wheelie phase, but there's still a couple things that I want to clean up on this bike. You can see I have like the zip tie drift stitching on the um, plastic because I snapped it. I want to tuck the wiring a little bit more, but super cool looking bike. I got that headlight for it and it ended up kind of completing things and looking great. And then we've got the YBE extended swing arm in the back, which also looks great. I was a little bit worried that the extended swing arm would kind of take away my ability to wheelie and trade that for stability. And overall, a lot more stable and I can still wheelie, so it really is a win-win. I'm sure if you go any longer than that, it probably does start to get difficult. I believe this is a three to five inch or four to five inch um, swing arm extension, but works great. I mean, can still wheelie plenty easily. So definitely a huge shout out to YBE. Uh, the guy texted me because I was an idiot and selected the wrong sprocket for the wheel I was using. And he realized that because I had a different thing mismatched in my cart. And he was like, hey man, uh, I think you got the wrong one here. Let me get you right. So a huge shout out to him because I would have ordered the wrong thing and had it delivered and been really disappointed. But he went that extra mile to, to look at it and say, hey, this doesn't make sense. You should probably get this one. Shout out to Young Ass Builds Electric. It's very, very cool that he did that for me. It's the kind of thing that will bring a customer back every time because I know that he's looking out for people, he's paying attention, and that's a really awesome thing from a small business. But all in all, if you're thinking about building something like this, I would highly recommend it for the price. You know, you can do this for about, 1500 maybe two grand and have a very very powerful very fun bike if you're looking for something to rip around the suburbs when you're bored or if you want an off-road bike these can be built to do that too it's a great platform also just for something to learn wheelies on and go have a good time this is just the perfect bike i've looped this thing probably 10 times and you know it did break the first time when my friend did it but i haven't broken it since i've i've actually sent it skipping down the street and it's been tough enough to stand up to that and because it's so small i can just hop off the back and stand right up i've been fine almost every single time that i've looped it so that's also pretty cool i think what's also cool is other than the battery you can build this pretty much all with like amazon parts you know you can get a generic my1020 conray motor you can get the vsc you can get the pit bike forks you can even get the triple trees which are super cheap and they work great uh, i don't know how they do off-road but on road they've been fine but pretty much everything you can get in an Amazon cart. I might actually do another build like this because my friend really wants one. So I'm thinking about doing a second one so we can rip around together. So I might document that process if I do. Um, we gotta get some good wheelies. We gotta get some good wheelies. I was getting some good ones this weekend. It's been, been super fun to learn, let's see. Oh yeah, so much fun, so much fun. Because of how small it is, it's so, so, so maneuverable. And I think it gives you a lot more confidence on the street like this because you have this tiny bike that just fits right underneath you and you're way more confident to, you know, have fun on it than something that's a lot bigger. Now, there's definitely a couple things that are a little lackluster on this bike that I do want to change out. I need to redo the front brake setup. I, it's already a, a generic pit bike brake setup and it works pretty well, but it, it does kind of have a little bit of fade and it does I, I can feel that it's just not what it needs to be so i'm going to look into getting a more performance caliper and rotor for that and maybe some pads and then the rear brake i think it just needs new pads um it's a, just a generic hydraulic mountain bike brake but it has like the stock chinese pads that are in it and there are e-bike specific pads that have a little bit more grip and and work a little bit better a little bit more friction but you know overall for how cheap the setup is it works great I think I pretty much killed my rear brake this trip. I used to be able to lock it up and now it won't even lock and it's all squeaky. Yeah, the rear brake's done, <laughs> need some new pads. Definitely gonna do a brake upgrade video. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this thing. I had just finished building it so I kind of wanted to make a video talking about it a little and tell y'all why. This is a really, really cool thing that you can build yourself or you can buy a kit for, you know, 
or you can buy one on Marketplace. People sell them a bunch. But if y'all have any other questions or any other video ideas that you want to see from me, let me know in the comments. I'm going to have more content on this thing. And then I also have my S14 drift car that's about to be finished with a 1000 horsepower 2JZ. So stay tuned for that too. Look at that sunset. Holy cow. Beautiful.